Imagine being transported to a different time where there is no electricity. The streets are full of animals and strong smells. People bustle about talking of art and humanism. You wonder how you got to this strange land. You even pinch yourself to make sure this is real. Indeed it is. Confused, you wander toward a large building full of noise. There are many people bustling about in this building. They seem to be getting ready for something. There is a stage inside atop the dirt floor. You notice a man ordering people around in costumes, and you realize they are the king's company. The man ordering them around is Shakespeare. He has written so many famous plays and created so many of the words you use today. But wait, he lived during the Renaissance. How could you be standing in the 15th century? Shakespeare invites you to play a character in his play tonight, A Midsummer Night's Dream. He wants you to play the part of a girl, but he can clearly see you're a boy. You look around to find someone else to be the girl, but you realize there are only men. You want to decline until he says that Queen Elizabeth might even be in attendance. You excitedly say yes. And even with the worry of getting back to your own time on your mind, you prepare for the show. After the play, your new friend Will introduces you to a woman clad in fancy dress and many jewels, with makeup covering her face. You recognize her from her many portraits right away, but Will introduces her anyway. And this, milady, is the beautiful Queen Elizabeth I. This is the woman who fostered in the age of prosperity for Britain, including exploration into the New World. You studied her in school as well. You stood in awe at the lady who loved her people so much. She got to know those she served over, and she tried to keep them safe, even though there were many who attempted to assassinate her. Her own father was mad that she was born, yet somehow she survived 47 years as queen. A big reason she was able to live as long as she did was because she set up a secret service to find those who tried to kill her. She knew everyone. If anyone would be able to help you get back to the present, it would be Queen Elizabeth. You ask her if she knows anyone who can help you return to your land. She tells you of a new scientist, one she has only heard of in rumors. His name is Galileo Galilei, in Italian. You have also studied him in school. Will tells you he knows how to get you to this Galileo. You bow, kiss the queen's hand and thanks, and start your journey to meet the scientist. Upon meeting Galileo, you see a workshop full of strange contraptions. He seems an irritable man, until you explain to him your predicament. You are from the future, and his findings of a heliocentric earth, gravity, and astronomy are known by everyone. Every school teaches about Galileo's findings. After this, he asks all kinds of questions, wanting to know the full impact he will have in the world. You tell him all you can remember. All the while, Galileo was talking to himself about how to find a way to get you home. Finally, after hours of mumbling, poking, and prodding, Galileo tells you he has thought of something. You need to be hypnotized for it to work, so you quietly lay down and listen to his voice. Suddenly, you wake up and realize you're laying on your own couch back at home, the television playing a program about Shakespeare in the background. You watch the program, confused and curious about if your adventure was all a dream. It seemed so real. You were in that play with Shakespeare. You kissed Queen Elizabeth's hand, and Galileo somehow transported you back to the future. You knew you sounded crazy, so you convince yourself it was a dream, and watch the program with a smirk on your face. As you reach up to change the channel, you hear the announcer say your name, as one of William Shakespeare's most famous characters in his play, A Midsummer Night's Dream.